Welcome to Independent Living Bullion's weekly market wrap podcast, helping precious metals investors during these treacherous times. And now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the fastest growing precious metals dealer in America, Independent Living Bullion. This is Mike Leeson with Independent Living Bullion. I'm joined now by David Smith, Senior Analyst at the Morgan Report and a regular contributor to IndependentLivingBullion.com. David, welcome back. It's good to talk to you again. It's really good to be back, Mike. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, to start off, let's talk about this major move we're seeing here. Uh, as we're talking on Thursday afternoon, gold is up nearly 3% on the day, which is a big, big move for the yellow metal, while silver is up nearly a dollar on top of the other gains over the past week. You've previously referenced a key reversal that occurred early in June that may have set the stage here. Tell us more about that and what's going on here with this big advance in the precious metals this week. Well, for those that are into technical analysis, a little bit, basically on a chart, if you have a situation where after an extended period of move of time, where prices uh, the next day or the next week in relationship to the previous day or week, if they have a range that is higher and lower than the preceding day or week, and then they close higher in the case of a bull move or lower in the case of a bear move, then you have what's called a key reversal. And sometimes these things happen and it doesn't mean anything, but if they happen on heavy volume in the direction of the move, then it's something you really want to pay attention to. And this is what happened a couple of weeks ago in the U.S. dollar index and in gold and silver. And the U.S. dollar index had a key reversal downward on heavy volume, and gold and silver had a key reversal upward on heavy volume. And not many people caught this. In fact, I didn't catch it immediately until somebody brought it to my attention. And the reason for that is because it was during a very quiet day where the range had been not all that great. And if you didn't notice what happened the day before, you wouldn't catch it. Usually these things are very wide-ranging days. And so I started looking at it, and the volume supported the move in both gold and silver. And uh, in the U.S. dollar, it supported the move down. And so we watched our, we wanted to see if over the next few days or even the next week or so, if the move continued in that direction that it initially suggested. And that's what's been happening with gold and silver over the last week, moving slowly away from that key reversal day on the upside, and then finding today a price explosion. And we'll see if it closes out the week in this regard. But the volume looks very strong, and I think we're likely to have a very strong close this week. Do you expect to see follow-through here? And we talked about the technical uh, uh, charts there a moment ago. What are some of the key levels from here that you're paying attention to, and, and what are you looking for in order to confirm that the breakout is, in fact, real? We have a, a number of uh, levels above this in terms of resistance. In the case of silver, it's $21 and 22 all the way up through 26 and then higher. But uh, it would be nice to see a close above $21, 2150 22 in that area and then a consolidation and a holding of, say, well above $20, because you know it's been down as low as 18 something here for a little while. In the case of gold, it would be nice to see strong closes above 13 The point is, beyond the fact of where prices go over the interim, is that they've now established what the, the bears uh, or the bulls would call a fairly good cushion on the downside. So the bearish uh, traders are going to have to chew down through that resistance that just a week or two ago they were sitting right in there, and now they're, this is quite a bit above where they were. And so the bulls have the nod now, and what I find very encouraging is that it's highly likely that if this, even if the portion of what we've seen over the last week or so holds on the upside, it really gives even stronger indication that intermediate and perhaps long-term lows are in in gold and silver. Turning to the Platinum Group Metals, you wrote a great piece for independentlivingbullion.com earlier this week on palladium that I want to deconstruct with you a little bit. First off, our listeners, David has been all over the palladium story for well over a year now and has been talking about how the supply deficit would fuel a rally in this metal, which is exactly what's happened over the past year. We've seen palladium outperform the other metals by a significant amount since the start of 2013, right around the time we first talked to you about palladium on this very podcast. Now, you pointed out that last week's correction in palladium following the South African mining industry labor agreement was going to be nothing more than a blip and a nice buying opportunity. And sure enough, that's what we've seen, and we've already recovered a, a good amount of those losses. Uh, talk about why you felt that way, and then what's happening here since uh, that two- to three-day drop last week. Well, as you mentioned, you know, uh, palladium has been an evolving story. In fact, 
um, at the Morgan Report, we've been following this in various forms, going to some of the very few properties that are under exploration in the Western Hemisphere and following the charts on platinum and palladium and looking at the supply-demand fundamentals that Johnson, Matthey, and others have put out that indicated that we had an evolving, uh, looming shortage of these two metals because uh, of the uh, only the very few places in the world, primarily South Africa and Russia, that actually produced the vast majority of them. And so, as you mentioned, I had written uh, a, couple, a series of articles over the last year or so, and my premise was that even though silver and gold had been in a cyclical bear market within the much larger uh, secular bull market, and they had been weak over the last two and a half years or so, platinum and palladium had been grinding slowly higher, and that they were actually the strongest of what I call the precious metals for. And I fully, uh, then even more so, focused on one of those two uh, PGM metals, platinum group metals, which was palladium, which my analysis and what I follow other analysts indicated that would be have even more potential to the upside when the bull move finally got underway uh, because it can be used for many of the same things that po- uh, platinum can be used for, and it's also about $500 an ounce cheaper. And it is uh, actually rarer than platinum, and yet it trades, uh, for example, now it's around 800 and something an ounce, and uh, platinum is around 14, 1450. And so uh, what was really revealing when I got to looking at the longer-term charts, I looked at a five-year price chart to see where the two uh, white metals were in relationship to their five-year highs. And whereas uh, palladium has actually challenged its five-year highs in the last week before this big drop that we had last week, platinum is still about 400 and some dollars below its five-year high. And so both of these have very bullish fundamentals, which really could go on for a number of years, before the supply catches up to demand. But of the two, palladium is much stronger from a chart standpoint. In terms of the South African mining uh, agreement or labor agreement that they finally struck, uh, you were talking to me off air earlier that that, that is not really going to uh, result in a whole lot. Of course, the initial market reaction was uh, the palladium dropped 4 or 5%, but uh, that's still a pretty significant story, and they are not out of the woods at all yet with that whole situation with those mines. That is really true, and it's the old, uh, you know, buy the intention and sell the news. And so what happened is that going on to the strike, which actually lasted almost five months, and by the way, while this was going on, the deficit that was building up of of PGMs that were not being mined was on the order of five to 10,000 ounces per day. Well, finally, it was, quote, solved about a week ago. They came to an agreement with the miners, and the price which had been anticipating, you know, going up in anticipation of this, dropped over $40 an ounce. But that did virtually nothing to have uh, any exchange on the supply-demand considerations, which are going to go on for a number of years. And so I looked at it as a potential buying opportunity. And what's happened now is that it's traded in that range of the where it dropped versus the high. It's still kind of in the lower uh, third of that range. And it may take a while to get back up and establish new highs, perhaps a few days, perhaps a few weeks. But the point being, it is almost certainly going to be going higher. And we've seen this kind of a move in the PGMs on several of occasions. If you look back at charts that go back several years, and in their bull trend, they've inevitably pushed on higher. So I think the odds are very good that uh, we will see higher prices over the uh, near term, uh, in certainly in the palladium as it moves up to challenge that high. And you know, it's very interesting. I just read this today, but supposedly the miners and the producers achieved agreement, but already the producers saying, well, there are several things here that we agreed upon that we're just not going to be able to afford to do. So I really think that this issue between the miners and the producers is a systemic one. It's not, uh, there's not going to be any easy solution, in fact, maybe no solution, because of the dynamics of the way um, PGMs are currently mined in South Africa today. Another thing you noted in your piece was that, uh, like silver, palladium and, and the PGM metals, for, for that uh, matter, are, are mined as a byproduct of other mining. Talk about why that's significant and really a bullish dynamic. This is really interesting and has, as you said, something very much in common with silver. In the case of silver, something like 60 to 70 percent of all the silver mined actually is a byproduct of base metals production of lead, zinc, or copper. And uh, some of the biggest producers in the world of silver, actually, uh, it's almost a, a credit or a byproduct of the other things that they mine. And so what happens in a case like this, and this is also true of palladium and to some extent platinum, 
uh, is that they compose 7 to 12 percent of the value of the ore that comes out of the ground uh, for the products. And so uh, if the price were to go up greatly, uh, it still doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily mine a whole lot more copper and nickel because that's going to be determined by their own uh, metrics of demand. And so they're not going to mine a whole bunch more copper and nickel, as an example, just to get 7% of the value of that in palladium. And so that's called price inelasticity. And that would mean if the price goes up, it doesn't necessarily mean that there'll be a lot of supply which will be dug out of the ground to try to chase that price. Yeah, that's a very key indicator for me and a key dynamic for somebody looking at uh, precious metals. I mean, if supply is not likely to just all of a sudden get flooded on the market uh, because of that type of dynamic, that's that's certainly a very, very bullish uh, fundamental. Uh, One of the aspects you talk about in the article uh, from this week was the huge amount of demand that will be created for palladium based on the fact that China is starting to get serious about vehicle emissions. Talk about that and the impact it may have on uh, the continued growing demand for palladium. Well, China has incredible problems with smog and with pollution in their biggest cities. In fact, in Beijing, you know, sometimes the sky has so much uh, uh, smog in it that the planes have a hard time landing and it blots out the sun and uh, all the health issues that go on with that. And that's just one city. And so they're taking millions of cars off the road that don't meet emission standards, and they're going to be using more platinum and palladium and catalytic converters, which are really the only things which serve to cut down the smog in the use of those vehicles. And it's my understanding that currently that the palladium and platinum that are used in Chinese vehicle production is something like a third to a fifth of what we use with the corresponding less efficiency. And so I'm guessing that they're going to be using more per vehicle as well. And that's just uh, as most of the demand for the PGMs today has to do with catalytic convertible use in regular engines and diesel engines. And so this is going to keep on growing as the economy grows. And then you have, that's just one demand element that is, it is getting bigger. You have the uh, rise of the exchange-traded funds, which are uh, where people invest in the funds, buy shares, and those funds buy physical metal, take it off the market and store it, like the silver ETFs and the gold ETFs. And this is a relatively new phenomenon, but there are a few ETFs out there for the PGMs, and they're soaking up uh, supply like a sponge. In addition, you have more and more people, and this has been pretty much recognized in China for quite some time, in addition to jewelry use of platinum and palladium. And, you know, my, my daughter got married a few years ago, and she has a ring that is not made out of gold, but it's made out of platinum and palladium. So this is becoming more of an interesting thing from the jewelry standpoint. But these people are also buying it as an investment. They're buying palladium rounds and palladium ingots, uh, because they're really as attractive in their own way as holding gold and silver as a precious metal for a long-term hold. Yeah, a lot of people uh, that we deal with don't even have enough gold and silver yet, and, and, and they're not really even thinking about uh, platinum or palladium at this time, at least until they've got a, a stash in the, in the main money metals. But you know, you mentioned in uh, your piece there that palladium's chart could be a real indicator for what's to come in silver. I wanted to ask you about that because that certainly would be uh, of great interest to a, a lot of our customers and, and listeners to this podcast. I think it's very helpful because one of the things is that human emotion uh, really doesn't change whether whether the vehicle is precious metals purchasing or real estate or stocks or anything else. They tend to be investing on emotion uh, even more than reason and following the facts. And so, as the uh, I believe as the PGM uh, breakout gets underway, as as palladium makes new highs and then down the line platinum does the same thing, you're going to see this kind of a, a rush into the metals and an excessive valuation of the metals based upon a lot of chasing that goes on by speculators. And so they'll eventually push it above fundamental value and we'll see certain chart formations as it makes intermediate tops, which is the same thing that's going to happen to gold and silver some years down the line. And the thing is, you know, for you and I and for the people listening to this, uh, this interview, uh, I don't think very many of us are, want to be speculators where we'll try to buy something, you know, next week and sell it a week later. We want, and indeed the way to make significant uh, return on your investment to have the best chance, is to buy it when something when it's a reasonable price and hold on to it for an extended period of time because bull markets don't just usually happen in four or five days and then they're over. And we wouldn't want to be in something like that anyway where it's straight up and straight down a few days later. They tend to develop over weeks 
many, many weeks to even get started, and then they have a breakout. And when they have a significant breakout that's confirmed by new higher prices, they tend to go on for months or even years. And that's the thing we're looking at, I think, for all of the precious metals for, is a, a very significant rise in price over a, a series of years rather than something where, we well, we probably want to be out of this by August. And that that is where the people who are like us who are not really speculators but rather investors and also seeking to preserve and protect our wealth for not only for insurance but assurance this is the type of market that we really want to pay attention to in our own financial lives well it'll certainly be interesting to see what happens here the remainder of the year a lot of precious metals investors have been pretty worn out by what's happened the last uh, several years but i guess the main advice there is just to to hang in there better days are are uh, ahead of us and and you'll be glad you kept your nerve and hung on to your position versus selling it at, at low levels david fantastic insights as always and thanks very much for joining us again hope you have a, a great weekend and, and we'll catch up with you again real soon it's been great speaking with you mike have a good week For those who haven't yet signed up for the Morgan Report, we have a special offer for ILB Market Wrap podcast listeners, the ability to get a no-risk trial of the Morgan Report newsletter, plus free silver for any listener that signs up for one of these refundable subscriptions today. Independent Living Bullion will ship you a free one-ounce silver eagle. The quality of information in the Morgan Report is second to none for anyone investing in or just thinking about investing in the precious metal sector to take advantage of this special deal Please look directly below today's podcast. Well, that will do it for this week. Thanks again to David Smith. Check back next Friday for our next weekly Market Wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Gleason with Independent Living Bullion. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Independent Living Bullion Weekly Market Wrap. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our weekly podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Visit us at www.independentlivingbullion.com or call one 800 800 1865.